Mother, we must take our leave. Pack the children well. I fear it's time we have to lay our plan. Dark words in the city, tales of turbulence they tell. Come quick, we better leave while we still can. Our country lies beyond the sea, Canada's its name. Land and freedom there for all who come. A place called Manitoba, they say we can reach by train. A new life for our daughters and our sons. Oh, let us go The fields of fertile soil waiting to sow There's room for all to wish and to make it grow Oh, let us go One hundred years has brought a lot of change to this land we call home. We've grown from a handful of pioneers in a vast and sometimes unhospitable land to an organized region with infrastructure and economy that provide the convenience and comfort that we enjoy today. And so on the occasion of the centennial year of the Royal Municipality of Brokenhead, it is fitting that we look back and recall some of the people and events that have brought us this far. We hope you'll enjoy looking back with us at 100 years in Brokenhead. On the happy occasion of his 99th birthday, we talked with Anton Ottenbright, a true pioneer of our municipality. I was born in Beckersdorf, in Austria, in the village of Beckersdorf. My parents were John Ottenbright and Christina Ottenbright. And we he came to this country in 1904. There were some of the known people like Schreiers and Baker, Pfeiffer, and then they all were here already. And we had to walk, there was just a little, a little, a little building, a little office there on the station there. They let us off. Now where's well, where shall we go? So we start asking, we didn't know English, we start asking which way shall we go now to, to those people. We bought 80 acres. There was a person living there. And I think we paid $800 for those 80 acres, but it was already the, a house, a log house, a log barn, a log granary, and uh, two oxen, two cows, and a wagon already, and a slave. That man sold us everything. And then the father was on the farm, cleaning bush, and he cleaned one acre. And he took the plow and the oxen, and I was driving the oxen, and he was holding the plow. We broke that one acre already to, to put right. wheat in there to have something there already. Driving home the oxen just about a mile from home. The oxen were thirsty, it was a, a hot day. They decided to go in the ditch for a drink. <laughs> so then we went over the oxen went in the ditch, we upset with the wagon. The wagon hit the stumps, and we upset that bag of flour in the water, and the crosses in the water, and everything. And the oxen stood and drink the water. They came from uh, oxen to horses, from horses to cars, and, and no, they're even flying already. So we had neighbors a half a mile. But there wasn't a week that they didn't come a couple times over. And, and we went there, and it's just every weekend there was a house party. Go from neighbor to neighbor. But a uh, big bottle of raspberry vinegar. Cut a pail of water, spilled that bottle of raspberry vinegar in the bottle in the pail of water, mixed it up, that was our drink. And uh, always somebody that could uh, supply the music. Uh, I used to supply the music myself. I had a button accordion, I used to go from neighbor to neighbor and supply, used to supply the music.
A new cairn erected in front of the RM offices now commemorates the history of Broken Head. New highway signs for the old communities and wise and appreciative words from some of our present leaders also were a part of our official celebration held on the summer of the year 2000. I want to particularly congratulate and thank the Reven Council and the volunteers who I know have been involved. To help celebrate the occasion of the centennial, local people, including some RM councillors, enjoyed a reenactment of the mode of travel of 100 years ago. Down the mighty broken head they go. Pieces of the past are still found at the Pioneer Village in the town of Beau Buildings and artifacts collected from around the district are faithfully preserved and maintained thanks to the Broken Head Historical Society. Here we join Mr. Tony Bonner, a former RM counselor, who recalls for us some developments over the years. When I graduated in 1929, that was the beginning of the Depression, and where we had big visions of what we would do with our future, there was nothing there to be done. I remember riding all, with about three or four of my school pals, we'd get on a uh, local, local train, which had box cars and passenger gar cars combined, and we'd go, take a, go as far as in Gulf, Ontario, and uh, jump off and pick blueberries. And this is a, uh, Typical picture taken on a Sunday. This one was taken in front of the town hall showing all the young fellas. There weren't too many marriages in the in Depression years. Behind the hall, one of the favorite sports on Sunday afternoon would be the boys would get together and get some dice and it would be a crap game going on. Mother, while the children sleep, we need to talk a while. The crop's no good again, I fear to say. We've come from some hard places, this land is harder still. We're weary to the bone, how can we stay? Our hands have worked together, we're partners of the heart. I know you're tired and there's no seed to sow. Though these may be hard times, now we've seen some good things start. Remember what you told me years ago. Oh, let us go. The municipal hall was right in the town of Bossier. And actually, previous uh, to the Bossier town hall being built, it was used as a town office and a municipal office. The upstairs had a little, like a hall, it had a stage, and it was the main place where they held all the concerts or political meetings or anything else. Uh, at the time I came to work there, I don't recall just how long John Sinnott was a uh, Reeve, but he initiated buying all the modern equipment uh, caterpillar tractors, an elevator grader, and a road grader. And I think in the first year they made more miles of road work than they had ever done before. Uh, previous to that, a lot of the work w on roads was done by statute labor, by the farmers in each area. And the work that they'd done would be applied to their taxes. In June of 1939, we had the royal visit from uh, George VI and Queen Elizabeth. And uh, at that time, nobody had any inkling that there'd be a, uh, a war coming on. And sure enough, sometime in about September or so, all the, uh, the Hitler fa fascists started marching on Poland and different countries. And that was the beginning of World War II. Uh, in in the both Broken Head Municipality and the town of Bossier, quite a number of the young people that were 
actually unemployed and uh, saw this as an opportunity to join the forces, which they did. This picture was taken in 1940. Uh, we had one of the, the mayor at that time was Dave Bethel, who uh, moved to Bossier after he had retired from the farming in a broken in municipality. He uh, uh, helped with a lot of the, the collecting donations and everything else. Uh, pictured in this uh, photograph, reading from left to right, the first one is of Mayor David Bethel, then Ted Oshansky, Jim Laurie, Bert Hoban, Fred Rumack, Ray Brick, Frank and Shork, Stanley Rumack, Bob Eckinger, Bill Splett, Richard Cates, and Kaz Hordisky. I believe the one that uh, was killed overseas was the last one, Kaz Hordisky. Uh, this photograph is of a baseball team called the Hollywood All-Stars. They're all uh, members from Bossier and surrounding area. Uh, they would challenge any team in any part of this area and then during the after the game and during the game we'd make collection uh, of money uh, which was used to send cigarettes and comforts to the boys overseas. The first, from left to right is Fred, uh, Tom Morfitt, Oscar Russell, the funeral director, uh, Ivan Ridley, the pharmacist, uh, Will Gush uh, was a blacksmith. Bill Bethel is next. He's an implement dealer. Uh, Clarence Bethel also was in the implement business. Then there was uh, uh, Meltzer uh, of the locker plant and Tom Donahue, uh, teacher. And the last one on the, on the right is uh, Bert Larson. Mayor of the town of Bossier. Uh, after things got going about in the beginning of the 40s, uh, there was a cordite plant built in Transcona, and uh, a lot of the people were able to get jobs just right here in town. Uh, many women went in and, and worked uh, in the cordite plant, which before there was, there was no chance of getting any work at all as well as, uh, I guess, in the farm trade, of course, they were, grain was, and was important. Uh, we needed a lot of uh, food to be sent to the uh, overseas, and that brought a lot of economy to the municipality as well as all the, the rest of the country. New technology is changing the face of our economy. A glass factory, silica sand mining, a brick factory, flour mill, and Polaris Industries are among the list of past industries. The rapid changes to farming have closed the doors of local implement dealers, and the day of the small family farm is drawing to a close. On the horizon are the information age and recreation tourism. Brokenhead is now the home of the Canadian Power Toboggan Championships. New developments such as this brand new motel are signs that the future will be met with the foresight and energy inherent in the people of Brokenhead. Thankfully, most of those early pioneers stayed. At great cost to themselves and sometimes to the limits of human endurance, they worked for the betterment of their families and community. And so after 100 years of work and wise stewardship, we take time to celebrate and be thankful for this great achievement. It gives me great pleasure to welcome and thank each and every one of you for taking the time to celebrate with us this special occasion, our 100th birthday and centennial celebration. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the many blessings which we have received, especially over this past hundred years. In a world where many go hungry, we have an abundance. In a world where many can only dream of peace, we know no turmoil. Would you help me welcome, please, the Ukrainian dance group, The Archive. <laughs> Yeah. 
Just like that, keep that star, keep that star. When I came here this evening for my wife, she said, no teary eyes and no jokes. I know I find that I've got to do that on one leg as well. My, my task this evening is a pleasant one, and one that to which I am proud to do to introduce one of our most famous native sons. Please welcome your, his uh, honor, Edward R. Schreier. The, the whole psychological framework, the whole mental set here was one of constant ferment and uh, bubbling over of people arriving, new people, every day, every month, every year, many of them of different languages. 90%, however, from Halichina, from Galicia, but from which there were Polish-speaking, Ukrainian-speaking, German-speaking. And uh, in case some of you wonder whether we here in eastern Manitoba, Broken Head, um, know the meaning of the word multiculturalism and the multicultural mosaic and the ethnic mosaic or the united nations and microcosm we understand it here in this part of the world better than anywhere else because we have lived it for 100 years and it has been beautiful Instead of speaking further in my own words, I found that my father, just a year or two before he passed away, had written a 101 page narrative manuscript about uh, the early days of uh, his life and of the municipality. Land was bought at $2 an acre. In our case, 100 acres of solid timber, mostly poplar, 80 to 100 feet tall, and 20 acres of slew grass. There was no lumber and no place to buy lumber, so two husky men would put a piece of timber on a scaffold, one above, one below, pulling the saw back and forth. Working in that way, it took quite some time, but the choice there was no choice. The roof was made of straw. Stories have been written, both in prose and in poetry, about pioneers arriving in a thickly forested area and sitting down on a stump and crying as they looked about and saw the years of back-breaking work ahead of them in felling the trees and clearing the land. The winters were cold. In Galicia, the climate was relatively mild, and a lot of the people coming over wanted to go back, to put it bluntly. They wanted to go back, but they didn't have the money. So they had to stay and try and save some money. But working for 75 cents a day, they never simply saved enough to make the journey home. And they stayed. Fortunately, I say, they stayed, fortunately for our part of the world, because I like to think that in staying, they helped to build this part of the province and this part of the country. And uh, we of ensuing generations are the beneficiaries of those who lived here in the hard days. In the hard days, I mean the pioneer days up to and including the dirty 30s. I see as much problems on the horizon as our forefathers had to cope with in the past, but they're totally of a different nature. And maybe the best way to end this is to end it on a positive and optimistic note, which is that 
whenever there are problems in the future, our chances of pulling through and living as well as possible will be as good or better here than anywhere else on God's green earth. Thank you. With the help of first the oxen, then the horses they did plow, a trail of broken backs and hearts and land. The shores along the broken head are fair and gentle now, a hundred years of toil by their good hands. And a good place to stop has become a good place to be, though they had so little to begin. Around the town they settled down to raise a family. This good land and our future they did win. Oh, let us go. The fields of fertile soil waiting to sow. There's room for all to wish and to make it grow. Oh, let us go. I guess I'm not like they used to be. <laughs>